Hello everyone, my name is Sakura Stardust and I am here to bring you the news on these papers. Actually, no, they're drawings of stuff and I'm gonna take these off because they're probably reflecting into the camera and there they go. So, I found that it's probably gonna be much easier to edit my videos if I don't, if I appear on camera. So we're gonna be doing this from now on and like I said, something fell. Possibly weekly basis for this. It depends on my schedule, but I'm gonna plan for every Tuesday. So I know this is called Nintendo News Update, and I know I'm gonna be starting with another Sonic story again, um, despite it being, you know, Nintendo News, but I kinda gotta talk about this because it's kind of a big deal. Um, essentially, there's been somewhat of a little purge going on with Sega and who voices Sonic, at least in English, and the biggest thing is that Sonic, the- I said this last week, the voice actor for Sonic is gone, the voice actor for Amy is gone as well. I don't know about Knuckles yet, but I know Tails is. The one I know for sure that they are keeping, and this has all been going on like all week, is the voice actor for Dr. Eggman, Mike Pollock, who I believe has been voicing the character for a little longer than the other voice actors. And, I mean, I find this interesting, I find this noteworthy, though this is not the first time this has happened. I did mention in my video, my news update last week, that this is something that happens, like, it happened with Sonic Colors, they changed the voice actors, and I think, essentially, Sega just wants to, like, reform Sonic's image yet again, especially for the 30th anniversary, and this is just part of that process. They've never really had a main Sonic voice actor like Mario uh, Charles Martin. They kind of translates to like Japanese and English because Mario just, he doesn't really say statements. He just goes like, it's a me, Mario. Let's-a go. Italian accent. And basically, it's just... I don't know. I think they're going to do some things with the Sonic franchise, the Sonic series, and Sonic as a character in a universe that's a little different from what we've seen so far. Hopefully not Sonic Boom different. Please, Sega, don't do that again. But yeah, I think there's reform going on. I think the next Sonic games in the Sonic Prime series are gonna be something a little different than what we were used to in the past 10 years, which could possibly be a very good thing because I think Sonic's in need of revival. And since the movie, the, the film that they did last year or the year before, it did pretty well. So I think Sega is really gonna move forward with that. Hopefully, I don't know for sure, but hopefully they move forward with that. But the whole thing with being a Sonic fan is you get your hopes up and hopefully your hopes will stay up. So I have hopes for this. Hopefully, if anything, they bring back the Chow Garden, maybe a mobile app or something. That would be a win for me, but I don't know. We don't know what's going on yet. We will just have to wait and see. Next, we got some kind of big stuff. I didn't really understand how big this was until I actually read the story. And essentially, essentially, words, uh, Nintendo is replacing its multiplayer server system dating back to the Wii U and 3DS era. Now, this is big for a number of reasons. I know people who play Smash complain about the online a lot. I notice I get dropped in like Splatoon matches and Mario Kart. Uh, kind of often, despite the fact that my internet's pretty good. So, this is welcome. This is a big change, and hopefully Nintendo Online will, you know, be more stable and be better. Which, you know, this is overdue. Wii U and 3DS era, that's uh, like seven years ago. Seven or eight years ago, depending on like when they redid it. But, um, some, some pleasant news there, I think. Hold on, I need water. Next we have something kind of silly, but I think it is cool. And essentially, Levi's announced a new line of Pokemon clothing. Misty's outfit is in it, and her shirt has a Togepi on it. And it's pretty cute. I will have photos up somewhere. And it's cool. It's a cool thing. Uh, if you like Pokemon clothes, I like Pokemon clothes. And if you like things are, that are a little stylish, I, some of the stuff is kind of iffy. Uh, it's pretty cool. Also, I kind of added this one because I'm a big fan of the, uh, how do I pronounce this? A Taylor Atele. I forgot how to pronounce this, but I'm a big fan of the series. And the Trilogy Deluxe Pack with Freeus, Sophie, and Liddy, and Sue L. I think some of these are PS3 games, maybe PS4. Um, it's a triple pack, so if you guys, um, if you want to get into this game series, 
Uh, I'd recommend a Taylor Riza because that one's a little more user friendly, but it's a good series, a good wind down series, much like Animal Crossing, except you're an alchemist. Has a lot of Rune Factory Harvest Moon vibes. Uh, so yeah, check it out if you like that kind of stuff. So next we have some kind of interesting speedrunner news, which there's a lot of really crazy stuff speedrunners do, but I found this particularly interesting because a Breath of the Wild speedrunner completed a 100% run without taking any damage. And Breath of the Wild is kind of hard to not do that, especially with the laser boys. So this is interesting, not really much to say about it, but it's it's really cool. So there is a Animal Crossing's New Horizons update that I did not mention in the last video. It is Super Mario themed and it arrives this March, of course, because March 10th is the day of the Marios. Uh, this dude made a really cool 3D printed Nintendo GameCube case stand where the GameCube stands on its side picture will be provided it looks cool that's about it <laughs> and in some news that may possibly make you feel a little old like myself paper mario the original nintendo 64 paper mario is 20 years old i actually saw this twitter post and found it kind of interesting because i didn't read it at first and i was like oh so nintendo is acknowledging early paper marios because th it's kind of been kind of a reform. I'm not going to go too into it, but the new Paper Mario games, the last three, um, I guess starting with maybe the Wii one, Super Paper Mario, there's been somewhat of a reform with how those games are created and the liberties they have with characters. I'm not going to go into it, but things have been very different. And I thought it was interesting that they did essentially mention this, but then again, it isn't because it's the anniversary. So I don't know. It's, it's not significant to anything for the future of the series, but I thought it was kind of cool. It's 20 years old now, that's insane. So I did talk briefly about Nintendo's projected releases for 2021 and the to-be-announced little tidbits such as Bayonetta 3, uh, Metroid Prime 4, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, really cool stuff that we don't know when is going to be coming out, but... Nintendo did make a statement, like, following up on that, which that was kind of intended just for investors and stuff, it wasn't for fans, but they did say they will be discussing upcoming Switch games at, quote-unquote, let me, let me get those air quotes out, an appropriate time. So that's about what I assumed. I mean, it's something that, like, Nintendo's not one to, like, get, like jump into like announcing things uh, really ahead of time. The only time I ever saw that was way back in like 2013 or 2014 when the Wii U was doing super bad and I remember there was a Nintendo Direct or E3 where they announced like, oh we have a Yoshi game in development, we have a Smash Bros in development, but you didn't see any of the game. Um, it was a long time ago, but I feel like that was kind of like an effort to make people want to buy the Wii U. Um, Nintendo does not typically do this in, in that they tell you the games out until like it's ready. And there's a lack of Nintendo Directs. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe we'll get more, maybe we won't. It seems like there is hope for them still though. But yeah, I got this quote right here and I'm gonna be all narrate and narrate it for you or read it. I don't know why my mic stand is like this. I could have just put it upside down. But the quote is, our software lineup for the next fiscal year is a topic we will discuss at an appropriate time. We have already announced our plans to release Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fe Bowser's Fury. Excellent narrating. Followed by Monster Hunter Rise in March and new Pokemon Snap in April. As always, we are preparing a variety of software titles for consumers in the coming fiscal year. So yeah, that is the quote, and it did remind me that we do have Monster Hunter Rise coming out. I did mention that in the last video, and we also have Persona 5 Phantom Strikers, I believe it's called, coming out later this month, like on the 22nd. Um, that's been out in Japan for over a year now. Last time I was in Japan, it was, like, out. There were, like, advertisements for it. So that one's kind of a late release, but still very welcome. So I did forget those third-party titles. They are pretty big third-party. They are very big third-party titles, and I forgot to mention them, but yeah, it's it's not looking horrible, but I feel like there's more Nintendo has up their sleeve that they're just not confident in showing yet. They don't think it's polished enough, and I respect that. So I'm going back to Sonic news. Um, essentially, the voice actor for Sonic Adventure who vo voiced Sonic, the extreme 
90s boy. I don't- Sonic has a very similar voice no matter what I think. But he already contacted Sega about a possible return. I think that's interesting. Drop my water bottle. Um, that's about it. If they went with it, that'd be very interesting. Sonic Adventure 3, maybe? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Another kind of silly thing in news is the Cat Mario show. This was something that was around when the original 3D World came out on the Wii U. It's like Mario and Peach cat puppets. Will I get content ID if I play this? It's essentially Mario and Peach puppets. They um, talk about Nintendo news and stuff, and I thought it was really cute. I actually subscribed to uh, the Japanese Nintendo channel just to see that. And it, um, it left eventually, like, I think in 2015, a long time ago. But they brought it back. That's kind of cool. Also, um, there's a streaming service called Crackle that I am aware of but have never used. And they are doing a five-part documentary series about Nintendo's history next month. I am personally a big fan of this kind of stuff. I really like the documentary they did on Netflix a while back about gaming. They really went in depth about it, and I thought that was really cool, and I just- I love shit like that, honestly. <laughs> um, so Super Mario World, the Giga Leak, there was a thing going on. I mentioned it in my Lost Media video of Japan. Um, check that out. I'll- I'll link it somewhere. But yeah, I mentioned the Giga Leak and that the 1989 build of Mario- Super Mario World was not in it, but a lot of other assets were. And part of this were remnants of the original uncompressed soundtrack of Super Mario World, which they did have like lines from Star Fox 64 that were uncompressed as well. Really cool stuff in my opinion. It's really jarring and weird to me to hear like these sounds. And the fact that you hear it clear and like how it's supposed to be heard and how it was heard organically before it was compressed into these older consoles is really, really cool to me. So yeah, these guys on YouTube, I'm going to link them. I do not know how long this is going to stay up considering it's leaked stuff from Nintendo that Nintendo probably doesn't want out without their permission. But um, people are restoring the soundtrack uncompressed. Well, a user is. I'm going to give the name up here in the text. Um, they're, they're doing a really good job. I listen to most of what they have out now. They have about like 15 tracks, I think, 10 to 15. They have um, the Star Road, which sounds really cool. All the boss themes and like the fortresses, they, they sound so cool. The Bowser Valley one's probably my favorite. That was my favorite as a kid. It's just so, so, so bumping. Is that what the kids say these days? It's just, it's so good. And you guys, you got to check it out if you are a big Mario fan. It's right on time with the Mario anniversary. And I think it's just, it's so, it's so cool. This is also one I took a screenshot of because that is how my unorganized ass does things around here at Sakura Stardust, the channel. Sakura Stardust, the YouTube television series. But yeah, essentially, this is a big Nintendo Switch exclusive that's been around for quite some time, which is the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics games deals. Um, there, there's a leaker that goes by the name Zippo. 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 That is correct. I thought I was incorrect. I can't... Uh, I had to look a second time. Zippo is saying, and I think he's pretty noteworthy, and he said, like, things that have come to fruition in the past. He has essentially said that the 2022 Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games um, is in danger of being cancelled due to some controversial stuff that's been going on that may not exactly promote the Olympics being a good thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's in danger, which is really interesting to me because they have been doing this consistently since I know exactly when, because around the time Smash Brothers Brawl and the Wii came out around 2008, they started doing the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games and they've been doing it consistently. So the fact that they're stopping it now is pretty noteworthy in my opinion. I only played like one of them. I think the one with the horseback riding like five years ago. Not a fan personally, but, but... The fact that it is something that's considering cancellation is noteworthy to me. Um, not huge news, but very, very interesting and kind of probably the right move, in my opinion. I really hope you guys like what I'm doing here. Um, it's just really me winging it. It's been a while since I've done, like, on-camera videos and I've been pretty awkward for the entire duration of my YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys like this. It's just me talking about things I like. That is... That's about it, honestly. But yeah, if you guys do like it, feel free to subscribe. I'm not going to force you, but drop a like in the subscriber section of the comments.
and do that. But yeah, guys, hopefully you like this Nintendo news update for this week of February, whatever day it is, February 8th. 7th it is, but it's gonna go out tomorrow, probably on the 8th. So I hope you guys liked it. Hope you... Hopefully... Hopefully you guys like this format and think it is interesting and entertaining to watch, my fellow gamer pog champs. But yeah, guys, I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now!